Sorry. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome back to Air Radio Salgir Spain today, 5th July 2022, as usual, Monday to Friday, the bulletins from Banjul de Gambia. We start with the headlines in English. Then after the briefs in English also, in the later part, we'll bring local language Edison as we usually did it. So let's start with the first story on Standard Newspaper. Consul Jaura protests to Barrow against Minister Drame. And then the second story, government spokesperson gets additional portfolio. Sankano appointed deputy. Then Madi Jobati or government or government to investigate illegal timber trade. Man stopped to date in Kololi and decide assembly finally accept petition to investigate GPA corruption allegations. Auditors tell NAMS GIA expended over three million dollars on this vehicle without due process. Then UTG staff president petition government council over a lapse of registrar's tenure. So those are the headlines from standard. Let's go to point. Reshuffle in diplomatic mission as government recalls ambassadors, head of missions. Then Sankano react to new appointments. Gambia and UN to sign MOU on counter terrorism. Honorable Bar Kuzon Beauty uh, Pagans organizer against pitfalls of the past. MOL stakeholders to address security challenges at airport. African heads of states to convene to champion strong start to IDA 20 implementation for a robust, robust recovery. Interior Minister inaugurate TV ET Center legal aid desk renovated, renovated female wing at Jam Jambure Prison. So national news from Point is not yet updated. Let's go back to standard and start with the first story in English. The first story in English from standard newspaper. Consul Jawara protest to Barrow against Minister Drami. By Omar Ba, standard reporter, read by Hajadam Air Radio Salger, Gambian businessman and consul to Angola, Haji Jawara, has written a protest letter to President Adam Barrow complaining against former Lands Minister Musa Drame. In February, January, uh, Jawara, rather, who spent 32 years in Angola and owns a multi million dollar holding company called Samuja, announced he is relocating all his companies from Angola to his native Gambia. 
Samuja is the leading manufacturer of diapers, uh, diapers rather, sanitary pads, kitchen towels, paper handkerchiefs, and restaurant napkins and face masks in Angola. But in the process of finding a land to relocate his business, Jaura said he encountered many uh, obstacles with the former lands minister Musa Drame. In the later address to the president shared with the standards yesterday, Jawara wrote, Your Excellency, during the mandate of Musa Drame at Lands, I visited his office several times with regard to allocating me a piece of land to start constructing my factory, but he refused for almost two years. Jawara said Minister Drame's refusal to allocate him the land has display, displayed his project and, uh, sorry, delay his uh, project and cause him significant financial losses. When I had the idea to relocate my business to the Gambia, I informed the president about it and he welcomed the idea and directed me to the Ministry of Lands. I went there and asked them about the process required. And I followed due process and paid all that is required. But Drame kept uh, twisting and turning me until at some point he told me there was no land for, the, for me at uh, Kamala area, Kam, Kam, Kamala area, he described. But within 40 days of coming into office, the new minister, Abbasanya, was able to allocate me a land in the same place that Drame said there was no land, Jawara alleged. Why should it be difficult for a minister to allocate land of a Gambian to build a factory that would employ Gambians? There were even instances when I went to his office and he ignored me. This were desperate times. These were desperate times because my machines were already here parked at my brother's factory, he said. Jawara said, though he appreciated the land allocated to him by Minister Sanyang at Kamalo, the space is nothing big enough, nothing or not big enough to accommodate his factory. It is also very close to the swampy river. This is because the reserve lands that were there when I apply has been allocated to foreigners by Musa Drame, he alleged. Yaura appealed to the government to allocate him another 40 meters by 40 plot, which will be able to accommodate his factory. Foreign businesses. Consul Jaura also advised the government to stop allocating reserve lands to foreigners. I am very worried that within a few years, all our reserve lands will be occupied by foreigners, and that should, and that should not happen. I am calling on the government to revisit the way they allocate land to foreigners. We should be uh, prioritizing our Gambian brothers and sisters. If as a Gambian you go to India or Lebanon, there is no way they will sell or allocate you government reserve land. He argued. Mr. Drami react. When contacted for comments, former Minister of Lands and now, Minister of Fisheries, Musa Drame, deny all the allegations. Haji's allegations are not true because two years ago, there was never any directive from the president's office to allocate land to him in Kamalo. The truth is that the Jawara apply on his consul uh, later hit, and I advise him to go to the land's office to request for the for form. And when he came back, he requested for one hectare. I told him, we don't have that at Kamalo. 
and that the only place we can get him is Hector is at Nyambai. Color where we are color where we are yet to demarcate. The that was the story behind the whole thing. There is nothing like a directive given by the office of the president. The president's office has nothing to do with land allocations, Drame said. On the allegation, on alleged an allocation of lands to foreigners, Minister Drame responded, let him publish one name of an Indian or Lebanese who has been illegally allocated land. And in any case, the allocation is meant for Gambians and non-Gambians alike who want to uh, invest in the country. There is no special criteria of allocation of lands to non-Gambians. If they apply and they meet the requirement, they have all the right as investors to be given land and he Haji doesn't know how those allegations are done. It ends there. That's why I'm very well. But I'm encouraged to see that maybe Denning, Ying, Kiva, Rongi, na maybe ko Haji Jawara, I too miru me la land minister koto nyinga maybe ko Musa Drame. Kabi ni mbota headline on la angale kanto in principal newspaper flu nyinto maybe ko standard anim point ah. Wale karang into full details in angle account. Ma promise o dinu ko ntai karang na mandika account o santem for later part that go time factor la fita purga nginu karang angle account o janin time o bin sola mena. Ukama lamba karang na angle account o da malto mbe continue sa kibardo nginna ura arama fong si nana na dung kibardo lu kono. So the next story from Standard Newspaper. Government spokesperson gets additional portfolio. Sankano appointed deputy. This one is a press release from uh, the government. Acting in accordance with the 1997 constitution and upon consultation with the Public Service Commission, PSC. President Adam Aparo has appointed Ibrahim G. Sangare government spokesperson and presidential advisor on diaspora affair, affairs effective 28 June 2022. Directly answerable to the president, the spokesperson managed the political information of the president and centrally <coughs> coordinates the strategic internal and external communications of the government. He speaks on behalf of the president, cabinet ministers, and all other senior officials, both national and international. Mr. Sangari, initially appointed by President Barrow in June 2018, will, with his expanded rule, advise the president on best practices for harnessing the potentials of the diaspora and guiding statutory entities in charge of diaspora affairs. In June 2017, President Barrow declared the diaspora as the eighth region of the Gambia and with the appointment of Sangare as presidential advisor on diaspora affairs. The government is showing political will and addressing barriers to effective engagements with the diaspora. Sangare rather a seasonal, a seasoned journalist holds double BA degrees in political science and history from the, oh, from North Carolina State University in Raleigh, NC, USA, and a Master of Arts degree in English literature from graduate schools of the University of North Carolina, North Carolina at Charlotte and uh, Gantna Webb University in Boiling Spring, North Carolina, USA. He proceeded to the University of Birmingham at Edinburgh, Boston, 
UK for his PhD studies in African studies with specialization in literature. He had earlier graduated with a teacher's diploma in English and history from the Gambia College and Bristol University, UK. Meanwhile, Prince Bubakar's Aminata Sankano, a political information officer, has been appointed deputy government spokesperson. Sangano is a veteran journalist with over 30 years of professional experience working for various national and international media outlets, notably. The Point newspaper, the Gambia Radio and Television Service, GRTS, Voice of America, BBC, focus on Africa and Germans, Radio Deutsche Welle. He studied digital film and animation at the SAE Institute in Germany before proceeding to the University of Stalin in Scotland, UK, for a master's degree in the arts and humanities with specialization in film theory and practice. Sankano is currently studying law at the uh, Faculty of Law of the University of the Gambia, Italia. So another story from uh, Standard News. Government ought to investigate illegal timber trade by who? This one uh, by Umi Mendi. Now the details. A prominent activist, Madi Jobate, has called on the government to launch an investigation, uh, in independent investigation into the illegal timber trade. The Gambia government issued a statement on Friday announcing the permanent uh, revocation of all timber export and re-export permits hours after refuting an article published by the Voice newspaper alleging that President Barrow is involved in the trade. But reacting to the government's announcement ban, Madi Jobati wrote, the government's press release on July 1st that it has revoked all timber permits with a new regulation is nothing but a, a smoke screen to divert attention from the corruption involved in this business perpetrated by government officials themselves. Now that they have been adequately exposed by both the media and the UN, the government is acting smart by you issuing this statement. I call on all Gambians to reject this press release until there is accountability first. We do not need minister and the government spokesperson to defend anyone. Let there be a full and an independent investigation. That is the ethical, professional and legal thing to do when such allegations erupt especially about a potential involvement of the president, he said. The Voice newspaper report, Jan Jabati added, has provided vehicles and container numbers and names of persons involved in this alleged illegal trade perpetrated in the president's interest. This is serious. Such information should not be brushed aside with mere high sounding and bombastic press release and comments from Minister, uh, Minister and Ibrahima Sankare. What is expected is for the government to be interested in knowing the names, vehicles and containers involved and whether the president is involved or linked to these trucks and containers or not. If not, the government needs to also ascertain if there or if these trucks, containers and persons are engaged in illegal activity or not. That is what is expected and this is what is expected rather and not a misleading and laughable press release, he added. In July 2020, he added another reputable media organization, the BBC, exposed massive illegal trade in 
timber in the Gambia. In a groundbreaking report, the BBC said figures obtained by BBC Africa I show that China has imported more than 300,000 tons of West African rosewood called Tectero Capus Eronasius from the Gambia since President Adam Barrow came to power in 2017. We know that in August 2018, both Barrow and Makisal made a joint statement before journalists in Dhaka that their two governments are determined to combat timber trade in the Kasamas region. Now, given all of the above, the Gambia government never felt compelled to issue a press release as they did on July 1st to tackle this illegal activity, he added. He said the, gov the Gambia government should be serious and spill the beans. We need transparency, accountability, and uh, property. I stand with the Voice newspaper story until the government institutes a full and independent inquiry, inquiry on the illegal timber trade in the Gambia. Until then, President Adam Barrow and the former Minister of Environment, Lamin Diba, and the officials have a case to answer, he said. It ends there. So, the other story, man stopped to date in Kololi from Standard Newspaper by Aisa Tamba. It's a short story. One Mamudundau has been charged with the murder on Saturday of one Hamido Bah at Kololi, according to the charge suit, now allegedly and unlawfully stabbed Hamido with a pair of scissors on his right rib, which led to his untimely death. However, Principal Magistrate Omar Jabang of the Kanifim Court yesterday transferred the case to the High Court, saying his court does not have the jurisdiction to try the capital offense, adding that his court shall not enter into any details of the case. Rather, it shall transfer the matter to the High Court for what of uh, jurisdiction. The police prosecutor Mbaji, representing the IGP, accordingly apply for the matter to transfer to the High Court. It ends there. Another story from Standard Newspaper. Gambia's, uh, sorry, the Gambia National Assembly finally accept petition to investigate GPA corruption as they denied from the office of the clerk two attempts, one by Watson Gambia, online paper and another two individuals from citizens apply this uh, petition. Now they finally agree to have an investigation on this corruption scandal uh, of this place, GPA. The headline, Assembly finally accepts petition to investigate GPA corruption allegations. This one by Tabora Bojang, Standard Reporter. A petition requesting the National Assembly to investigate corruption allegations at the Gambia Ports Authority GPA has finally been accepted by the office of the clerk. The petition drew attention to corruption and, and bribery allegations by some staff of the GPA written unit. They are accused of issuing fake receipts, undercutting fees soliciting bribes and other acts which allow them to make four million dollars every week between 2020 to 2022. A petition to investigate the matter was first sent to the parliament by Watson Gambia, a popular online media, but their request was re rejected by the office of the clerk for failing to meet the administrative criteria. However, two Gambian, Mohammed El Dabo and Tijan Ba, then took up the, or took up the matter and 
pose for the petition to be returned to the assembly last week. Mohammed and Tijan want the clerk to take their concerns seriously, refer the matter to the public petition committee to investigate the allegation as well as compel the GPA management to share the public the reports of its internal investigation on the matter. According to them, corruption is deeply embedded and institutionalized in the public sector, reflecting an increased struggling economy, a broken health care and poor educational system. We therefore respectively urge your office to consider this petition admissible and refer it to the public petition committee and pray that the said committee will compel the board's authority to make public their internal investigatory report on the alleged graft by their staff. The petitioners urge the clerk. In its response seen by the standard, the office of the clerk in a later dated July 4, 2022 stated, given that the office of the clerk has not found anything particularly objectionally about the form of the petition or the other elements of admissibility. It is the considered view of the office that the petition, which is in the English language, generally meets the requirement of National Assembly standing orders. The petition is admissible and shall be referred to the Public Petitions Committee in accordance with Standing Order 126, bracket 7 of the National Assembly Standing Orders. It ends there. The other story too from Standard News of Auditors. Auditors still names GIA expended over three million dollars on MD's uh, vehicle without due process. This one by Omar Ba, Standard Reporter. Now the details read by Hajaram Ayar Sal Yeruna Spain here in our Facebook channels, our timeline, and our YouTube channel. The Gambia International Airline GIA has reportedly spent over three million dollars is on a Mitsubishi Pajero GLX without following procurement process according to Accord Associated and Independent Audit Firm which audited the agency. We observe that an, a motor vehicle Mitsubishi Pajero GLX BJ557051 bought for the managing director at a cost of Three million four hundred ninety-three thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars is from TK Motors Limited. Did not pass through the procurement department and GPPE's system. Omar K. Jallo, a representative of the audit firm, told the uh, National Assembly Finance and Public Accounts Committee on Wednesday, the private. Audit from officials added that the issue was observed during the firm's audit of the fixed assets additions of the institution. He added that the receipt and delivery note from the supplier were not attached on the payment voucher. The accord associated or associate rather representative said that they also noticed that the new vehicle was acquired in a part exchange transaction with the managing director's existing car, but there was no independent valuation reports to determine the fair value of the old vehicle. He revealed that the value used in the exchange was based on the records not Netbook, record netbook, value of $1,493,333. The lack of compliance with the GPPA guidelines is a violation of the GPPA Act, while the 
while the lack of involvement of the GIE procurement until indicates a weakness in the application of the company's in internal control, Jallo said. According or accord associate recommended for the GIE management to ensure that all the acquisition of the assets that are relevant to the approval of GPPA and requires the involvement of the procurement unit pass through the appropriate unit to attain the required compliance. It ends here. Another story from from standard UTG staff president petition government council over a lapse of registrar's tenure. This one by Tabora Bojang and read by Hajara Air Radio Sal Journal Spain. Now the details. A senior lecturer and president of the University of the Gambia Staff Association, Dr. Ali Ujiba, has petitioned the chairman of the UTG Governing Council over what he calls the illegal occupancy, occupancy of the office of the registrar by Dr. Mahmoud Lamin Taro. In a letter entitled Notification of the End of Term of Mahmoud Lamin Taro as registered, sent to the Vice Chancellor National Assembly Education Committee and the Ministry of Higher Education, seen by Standard. Dr. Giba argued that the continuous stay of Mr. Taro in office is in violation of the UTG conditions of service, which states that the tenure of a registrar is a fixed term, renewable only once. I would like to bring to you to your attention that the current university registrar's term has legally ended and he is therefore unlawfully occupying the office. He was confirmed as a registrar in 2014 for a contract period of three years, which was mutually renewed for a second term in 2017 for another three years. According to section 8.2, subsection 8.5.1 of the UTG conditions of service, appointments to the position of university in the registrar and director of finance shall be for a fixed term with the possibility of renewal. But only once such post shall be filled through advertisement, interview and assessment, Dr. Giba yield in the letter. That being the case and in the interest of universities' integrity and best practices, I therefore urge you to engage the registrar, Dr. Mahmoud Lamin Taro, to relinquish his current position and move to another administrative or academic portfolio, as his stay in office violates the 2007 UTG conditions of service thereafter the registrar's position be advertised and feel accordingly, Giba said in the petition. The standard contacted the chairman of the UTG Governing Council, Matthew Ndur, who acknowledged receipt of the said petition, but declined to make any further remarks. I am not the council. I am just a chairman, and so I cannot preempt any decision that the council will make in this matter. The council has not met over it, over it yet because we meet on a quarterly basis, but it will be given due consideration during the council's normal meetings. Ndur said, it ends there. So let's see whether there is another story from Standard. No, let's go to point newspaper and start breathing and uh, de detailing. So a continuation, the point newspaper, 
They said there is a reshuffle in in a diplomatic mission. Reshuffle in diplomatic mission as government recalls ambassadors, heads of missions. This is a press release. Read by Hagjana Air Radio Sir Jerona Spain here in our studio and our Facebook page timeline and our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us and like us on our Facebook pages and share with your friends. Now the details. The Gambia government has recalled more ambassadors head of missions. First secretariat protocols, consulars and welfare officers which expired and soon to be end contracts as part of its diplomatic reshuffle. The point has learned. The following changes have been made. First EU, Brussels, Tenen Jaite, two, Havana, Cuba, Khadija to Mane, three, Saudi Arabia, Omar G. Salah, fourth, UN, New York, Lang Yabo, fifth, uh, Mauritania, um, Maudo Jawara, sixth, Madrid, Spain, Habib Drame, Deputy High Commissioners recalls, first, Charles Camara, Havana, Cuba, two, Philip Sambo, three, Madrid, Spain, Philip Sambu, Madri, Spain 3, Fort Dr. Mariama John Jai, Dhaka, Senegal, and also Aliu Njai, London, UK, 6, Alexandra Mustafa Da Costa, Geneva. All heading back home are uh, uh, face secretaries, Portugal's uh, protocols, rather, consulars and welfare officers. Also, President Barrow has earlier appointed Fatou Bensura, former ICC prosecutor, as High Commissioner to the UK. Fatou Jahumba Sisi, who is now Secretary General of APRC, as Ambassador to South Africa. Ami Fabre, former Minister of Agriculture, has been appointed Ambassador to Guinea-Bissau. Noha Ture, a former Secretary General, has been appointed as Ambassador to Spain. Lamin Diba, the former Minister of Environment, is now Gambia's UN representative, while Fafa Sanyang, former Minister of Petroleum, has been appointed Ambassador of the United Emirates. Sek Omar Fai, the former Minister of Defense, is now the Ambassador to Mauritania. It ends there. So let's go to the second story from Point Newspaper. This is an appointment. Sankari react to new appointment. Acting in accordance with the 1997 constitution of the Gambia and upon consultation with the Public Service Commission, PSC, His Excellency President Adama Barrow has appointed Ibrahim G. Sangare as government spokesperson and presidential advisor on diaspora affairs effective 20 June 2022, according to the new release. Reacting to this development, Ibrahim G. Sangare said, It is very humbling that out of all the very qualified and deserving Gambians, President Adama Barrow would continue to trust my judgment in this very complex state matter. Directly answerable to the President of the Republic, the spokesperson managed the political information of the President and centrally coordinates the strategic internal and external communication of the government. He speaks on behalf of the President, Cabinet Ministers, and all other senior officials, both national and international. So here we will stop here from this story because we have read this from a uh, standard newspaper. Let's continue with another story which is not mentioned in standard, the UN. Gambia and United Nations to sign MOU on counterterrorism. This is a press release. Honorable Minister of Interior, Mr. Siaka Sonko, on Wednesday, 29 June, pres uh, presided over the 
advance pass advance passenger information ap and passenger name record pnr national uh, steering committee meeting the meeting was held at the ministry's complex in kotu the committee is responsible for overseeing the implementation of the united nations flagship initiative on member states capability on countering terrorism and serious crimes this may include the crossing of national borders through the provision of api stroke pnr data control border and law enforcement agencies in the country during the meeting minister sonko encouraged members of the committee to be devoted to their task saying uh, issues of terrorism are critical to national security he affirmed government's support and political will to address crimes at national and international levels the meeting also discussed the mission report of the recently concluded meeting organized by the UNOCT of the West African Informal Working Group held in Sierra Leone. It allowed West African states to share best practices and network as part of their implementation of the projects. This one by Fatima Juf, Information Officer, Ministry of Interior. Let's see whether we can add another one on it. So let's see. Let me see what time we have now. We have 40 minutes, but uh, we cannot read more than one now. Let's see but which one we are going to bring African head of states to convene to champion strong start of either 20 implementation regular let me see whether it's long or short story it's a short story this one is uh, african heads of states to convene to champion strong start to either 20 as they call it implementation for a robust recovery it's a press release release dakar july 3rd 2022 the republic of senegal and the world bank group will host a high level meeting on july 7 2022 with african leaders to leverage the powerful voice of african countries in implementing the ida 20 program which financing and policy package was successfully endorsed by the heads of states a year earlier at a similar summit in abidjan the cycle for the 20, uh, 20s implement of uh, 20th, 20th implements of the international development association either 20 will run for or run from july 1st 2022 to june 30 2025 the meeting hosted by his Excellency President Makisal of Senegal would call on leaders and implement and implementers, implementers to full tap into IDA 20 IDA under underpinned by World Bank, global expertise and countries presence to deliver lasting result to African citizens. It will further position the World Bank and especially IDA IDA at the heart of the region's efforts to respond and recover from multiple crises. The heads of state will underscore their underscore their commitment to robust recovery for African and identify priority transformational initiatives that would allow Africa to leap forward with dedicated support from either IDA. Africa has the most number of countries, 39 of 74 benefiting from either IDA 20, whose theme is building back better 
from the crisis towards a green resilience or resilient Lara an inclusive feature. African countries have been hit hard by multiple global crises, including climate change, the COVID-19 pandemic, growing level of growing level of hard multiple growing level of insecurity and more recently the crisis in Ukraine. The World Bank Group stands ready to partner with governments as they implement policies for building back better and for accelerating the development and economic transformation of the continent. So that's the end of the story right now. We'll back in later part, maybe in the evening, to bring the full stories in English and Mandinka, or brief in English and later in Mandinka, the whole details. So we call it a day from now on. So, Madame Loko, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. Rose Awati. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. Because I'm going to do something. 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 I'm going to do full details. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. Almost. Principal stories. St uh, point for now. I mean, in English, standard man coincide with the whole for now. Current. So, say I'm going to read you a row. Can move on. Can I? Can I read only a brief? Angle account or any full details for the manika account. Nindo. So, but but in our what only? Now, see that. So, la para kal kana history ka join na programo nindo me kila through na Facebook page o nindo kata na YouTube channelo nindo. So, Allah barakallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah jalla malayya radio spend banko kang salsato ni kono.